Welcome. We're glad you're joining the Fountains today. Along with this virtual connection, I'd like to encourage you to keep sharing what's happening with you and your loved ones so we can offer one another the kind of support that the Fountains is known for. Just send us your joys and concerns by leaving a voicemail message at the office, by emailing it to welcome at weputlovefirst.org, or you can also click on the link below on tinyurl.com slash fountainsconnection and fill in the online form. Also, I want to offer a special thank you to author and composer Amanda Yudis Kessler, who will be with us for today's in-person celebration and who composed a new song for us today that's based on the theme for today's message. Amanda set her lyrics for persistent hope, enduring love, to amazing grace. So I encourage you to stick around after the message segment to join in singing this brand new hymn with us. In the meantime, thanks in advance for sharing your joys and concerns with us, and thanks for being a part of the Fountain's virtual family. We're glad you're joining us for today's celebration. Join me as we get in the spirit. Each day brings a newness that we need but step into. It can refresh us, lift us, heal us, hold us, just as each of us has need. May we be open to the spirit of life that often lies dormant within us. May we be filled with a confidence in our own strength. May we move from our routines that we follow into the fulfillment of a life of possibilities. Let's affirm the Fountain's mission together. As followers of Jesus, we, we put, put love, love first. As we enter into this time of quiet and meditation, we open ourselves to the presentness of the Spirit at work in our hearts and minds. As we take this moment to center ourselves, 
we seek to make space for the Spirit to be at work, stirring us to examine with humility the deepest parts of who we are. So wherever and whenever you're experiencing this moment, take a deep breath and set her down. Set aside the chatter in your mind. Let go of all the distractions of the day and simply be still. Breathe deep. Settle into the here and now. And may we sense the Spirit's presence. We hear the call to do justice, but it's so much easier to live comfortably with injustice. We pursue our own self-interests, insulated, isolated, blinded to the suffering of others. We give up when we should persevere. We fail in our efforts to create community. We often act from motives other than love. But in the midst of all our shortcomings, we have known the mystery of grace. We are grateful for its many forms, love toward one another, reconciliation of relationships, the wonder of wisdom, and the challenge to be transformed. As we acknowledge our roots in this community of faith, we're grateful for the support and fellowship of fellow travelers on the journey. May we be strengthened to live out Jesus' call to seek justice in the world, unafraid, pressing on, strengthened by the witness and spirit of the one who calls us to new life. This is our prayer. We offer this time of quiet, bringing our whole selves in the name of the one who taught his first followers to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
are starting a new mission at the New Leaf Men's Shelter in Mesa. We're going to be serving a dinner meal on Monday, June the 5th. Everyone can get involved, even if you're not in town. We need money for food. We need people to go down and actually serve the meal. And so we're giving you an opportunity to help and sign up if you are able to bring part of the food um, or to go down and serve. Please watch for details in the eStreams and on uh, your email to volunteer to help in this new mission. We are so excited to be getting back to serving meals at a center that is very close to Fountain Hills, only 20 minutes away. So please, if you are available and able, we hope that you will help us to serve this important group of people trying to get their lives back on track. Thanks. Every day, the Fountain strives to put love first, both in person and online. And if you're one of our many regular online viewers, we're grateful for your participation as a digital member. Every week, you hear all about the many ways you can give electronically to support this online outreach. Like using the QR code on the screen, going to give.weputlovefirst.org, or downloading the Vanco mobile app. Then, when you're on our secure giving web, site, be sure to look for the line that says Studio Celebration Donation. A contribution here lets us know you're out there, that the studio is important to you, and that you want to be part of the supporting this growing digital art reach. So, wherever and whenever you're watching, we're glad you're joining us. Thanks in advance for supporting the studio financially. In mountains out of such a leaf here I go mixing mortar for another wall to build there's a struggle in this life we lead it partly you partly me but every road that's traveled teaches something Every road that's narrow pushes us to choose. And I'd be lying if I said I had not tried to leave a time or two. But every road that leads me leads me back to you.
to the Holy Ghost, give thanks because God's given Jesus Christ the Son. And now let the weak say I am strong, let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks with a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One, give thanks because God's given Jesus Christ the Son. Give thanks. Our reading today is from one of what we call the authentic letters of Paul. And once you know which letters are the real Paul, 1 Thessalonians, Galatians, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Philemon, Romans, and Philippians, you start to recognize his vocabulary and theology. Then the agenda of hashtag fake Paul, Ephesians, Colossians, Hebrews, Titus, 1st and 2nd Timothy, etc., starts to become really obvious. Things that the authentic Paul would have never said, like, women need to sit down and shut up. It's good to remember when you're reading the real Paul that he was not the most popular person around. There were people actively working to discredit him. So in our passage today, Paul is in the midst of some CYA with the Philippians. He wanted to make clear that he was a member of God's chosen people. Yes, Paul was a Jew, and that he had served God with a clear conscience by his strict observance of the law. Now, Paul gilds his resume right before our passage today by justifying his claim. If, if anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. But Paul was making a case for the advantages of readjusting his identity with a priority on this idea of Christ in me, and felt himself being changed. But here's the deal. From experience, Paul knew that this transformation always remained a work in progress. He hadn't already reached the goal, which in this passage he interprets as metaphorical resurrection to new life. So, Paul declares his resolve to the Philippians, I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own, over and over again, in this passage and the passages before, Paul makes the case for abandoning everything associated with recognition for personal achievement in order to pursue the prize of becoming more compassionate, more inclusive, more loving, and less patient with the status quo. In other words, being more like Jesus. Our words of wisdom are from Philippians, chapter 3, verse 10 through 14. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may obtain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Jesus Christ has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. One of the many surprising things for me about being a dad has been the sense that I have learned way more from my kids than I can possibly imagine them having learned from me. Some of that has come from what they're learning in school, and some of it has been the books that they collect over the years. One of those was a book Maddie glommed onto called 
Marvelous Maddie. And while such a title absolutely describes my Maddie, it's actually about a woman named Margaret Knight. Working as a child laborer in a 19th century New England cotton mill, 12-year-old Maddie witnessed her fellow workers being seriously injured by the looms and proceeded to design a metal guard to protect her fellow workers. And today, if you ever get your groceries in a flat-bottomed paper grocery bag, you're using a product created by a machine first patented by Margaret Knight in the 1870s. But it wasn't without difficulty. Her original idea was stolen by a man who had seen her prototype. When she took him to court for patent infringement, his defense was that well, as a woman, she couldn't possibly understand the mechanical complexities of this machine. Well, she not only proved in court that she could, she went on to be awarded 87 patents, was decorated by Queen Victoria, and even designed one of the first gasoline rotary engines. But all through her life, she encountered significant pushback from people, particularly men, who belittled her capabilities and dismissed her capacity for understanding mechanical complexities just because she was a woman and one with no formal training. But over the years, not only did her inventions speak for themselves, Maddie refused to be silenced. Despite facing adversity, she showed that setbacks and challenges are no reason to surrender, but are, in fact, opportunities to break down barriers of prejudice that would make a difference for those coming up behind her, paving the way for future generations of women inventors. Did you see this ad during Women's History Month? For the first time ever, we've completely reimagined the automobile. Introducing the men's only Ford Explorer. With no windshield wipers, no heater, no turn signals. Wait, no rear view mirror? No GPS, are you kidding? Ah, it's missing all the parts created by women. Wow. Whose great idea was that? This Women's History Month, Ford salutes the visionary automotive work by women past, present, and future. In a world that often tries to diminish the accomplishments of women, Maddie's legacy paved the way for other women to embrace their passions, defy societal norms, and strive for inclusion and equality. For over 50 years, she never missed a chance to demonstrate what persistence and unwavering determination looked like, coming to be called the female Edison. Her journey from a young girl battling what today we'd call sexism and misogyny to becoming a renowned inventor is a testament to her resilience and refusal to give up. And that kind of resilience and persistence is exactly what Paul is talking about in our Philippians passage today. But he's reminding us that the struggle to persevere and never give up goes beyond our material goals and is every bit as important in one's spiritual life. Paul knew that if we're going to try to live into the totally unreasonable expectations that Jesus sets before us, things like loving our enemies, forgiving our neighbors, confronting an unjust status quo, that we're going to face setbacks. But does Paul care? No. He says, look, if you're going to try 
and look more like Jesus, setbacks are part of the deal. You have to keep pressing on. In our passage today, despite all of the documentable achievements that he brags about, in the passage right before this, he literally says, if, if you think you've got reason to be proud, forget it, I've got more. Paul's attitude was, forget what lies behind and strain forward to what lies ahead. Back in 2009, I had the privilege of attending ASU's commencement to see a couple of friends graduate. The commencement speaker was Barack Obama, and so, of course, there was controversy. ASU created a huge flap by deciding to not confer an honorary degree upon the newly minted president. Why? Because, as was stated in an ASU press release, his body of work was still ahead of him. So, in a really clever move, Obama's speechwriter, John Favreau, took the alleged snub and embraced it. Instead of avoiding the topic, Favreau made it the focus of Obama's whole speech. It doesn't matter what you've accomplished already, he said. You have plenty more ahead of you. It's a brilliant move. So, in what seems like Favreau channeling the Apostle Paul, he wrote this for the president. I want to say to you today, graduates, that despite having achieved a remarkable milestone in your life, despite the fact that you and your families are so rightfully proud, you cannot rest on your laurels. You can't rest. Your own body of work is also yet to come. Why? Because the one thing I know about a body of work is that it's never finished. It's cumulative. It deepens and expands with each day that you give your best, each day that you give back and contribute to the life of your community and your nation. You may have setbacks, and you may have failures, but you're not done. You're not even getting started, not by a long shot. I know starting your careers in troubled times is a challenge, but it's also a privilege because it's moments like these that force us to try harder, to dig deeper, and to discover gifts we never knew we had, to find the greatness that lies within each of us. So don't ever shy away from that endeavor. Don't stop adding to your body of work. Don't stop adding to your body of work sounds awfully familiar, doesn't it? Paul said we should always be pressing on. And in turn, John Wesley picked up on the idea and said that our life should be about going on to perfection. Now, granted, this was the source of a huge argument between the Wesley brothers. John said it was a conditional perfection. He made some excuse about not intentionally doing harm to someone. But his brother Charles was not going to have any of it. John lived in a certain kind of denial his whole life because he was a bachelor into his 50s. Charles, on the other hand, was married and had a house full of kids. I think he had a more realistic outlook when he said, the only perfect Christian is a dead Christian because you can't mess up anymore. Nevertheless, John persisted in the idea that you could be perfect in this life. So, for John, one more thing pressing on means is not giving up. One of the most crazily joyful videos I've ever seen is the final seconds of a football game in Jackson, Mississippi. Trinity University versus Millsaps College. When the ball was snapped, Millsaps was ahead by two points, and there were only just two seconds left in the game. It didn't look good for Trinity. 
but they didn't give up. For those of you who aren't football fans, the clip that I'm about to show you involves what's called a lateral. And that means that as long as a player throws the ball in a lateral direction or behind him, the play isn't over. What you're about to see was named the best sports moment of 2007 by Time Magazine. Score on this play, or the game's over. Barmore's got three wide receivers to his left and two to the right. He takes the snap. There's only three men rushing for Millsaps. Barmore throws it over the middle, complete to Thompson. Thompson looking for a block. He laterals it to Curry, and Curry laterals it again, and it's caught again. And Tomlin now on the lateral, and now the lateral to Thompson, and he laterals it back to Maddox on the other side. Maddox looking for a block. He fakes the fakes the lateral to Curry. Now he laterals it to Curry. Curry's at the 49-yard line. He's dancing around. He throws it back now to Maddox, who throws it across the field to Barmore. Barmore looking to run. He's looking for a block. He's got a convoy. He's going to throw it to Thompson. Thompson's at the 30-yard line. Thompson now laterals it back to Curry at the 35. They're running out of spaces. Curry fakes. He's going to lateral it to Tomlin. Tomlin's got a chance to go. Tomlin's got a chance to go. He laterals it. Now he's going to go to Maddox. Maddox at the 30-yard line, and now it's a lateral, and Curry's still going. No way. Curry's no going to the end zone. It's a touchdown. It's a touchdown. Curry scores. The game is over. Curry scores. Curry scores on the lateral. Curry scores. The Tigers lateraled it and kept lateraling, and the game is over. The Tigers win. The Tigers win. The Tigers lateral it and keep lateraling, and they score from the 39-yard line. The Tigers win the football. Celebrating the Millsaps Majors are crushed, understandably so. This football game is over. This game is over. That might be the most sensational, incredible ending in all of Division Three. Oh my gosh, I do not believe it. This- no fewer than 15 lateral passes. <laughs> One lateral is considered a risky move in football, but 15. By the time of the first lateral pass, the clock had already run out. The Trinity University players had literally, or laterally, nothing to lose. With each ball handler, in turn, tossing the ball away to a teammate moments before being tackled, it was 15 separate risky decisions. Incredibly, this last-ditch strategy paid off. Sometimes, when all seems lost, you're freed up to do things that at any other time would be considered crazy. But in the name of pressing on, you do it anyway. You may not get all the way to perfection. In fact, it may even be a little chaotic. But more often than not, it's in the striving that you find fulfillment and meaning in life. Henri Nouwen used to say that so many of us base our lives on what we have, what we do, and what other people think about us. He speaks about how when we look back, when we're older and we point to our trophies and say, see, I, I really was of value. He says that, All of these ways of defining ourselves are wrong. Instead, the truth about us is that we are all beloved children of God. And our challenge is to live out our lives, living into what is essentially a non-results-oriented truth. We don't need to win trophies or awards to have value as a person. If you don't believe me, then try to remember our stream of thought for today. All anybody needs to know about prizes is that Mozart never won one. Life is about embracing our passion and running with it. And last second laterals are totally acceptable. In this season, a lot of our friends and family members and some of us here today are 
being recognized for achieving the milestone of graduation. And that's great. This advice applies to you, but it's also a great reminder for all of us. Whatever comes down the pike in the coming years, we all need to remember that each of us is a unique, never-to-be-repeated expression of the universe, and we're beloved children of a spirit that is closer to us than our very breath. And Paul's message for us is, forget what lies behind and strain forward to what lies ahead. May each of us go from this place knowing that the strength we gain from striving in the midst of difficulty is often prize enough itself. As Paul even says of Jesus' example, snatching new life out of the jaws of death. So, graduating class of 2023, and everybody else for that matter too, remember this. Pressing on is what Jesus' followers do. Going on to perfection is what Methodists strive for. And never giving up is what Maddie Knights do. And with the knowledge that we are beloved children of God and the commitment to never give up, may we never miss a chance to add to our body of work. It's what life is all about. Be well. Let us offer these words of challenge and blessing to one another as we go. The world is ours for a time. May we be encouraged to know it. The human mind is ours for a time. 
May we be encouraged to explore it and expand it. The human heart beats out its number for a time. May we be encouraged to be fully alive in our time. May May peace peace be with us and our world. world.